Hi, it's Jean Rahema here. I am so happy to be here with my friend Moses. Moses, please say something. Hi, subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Moses. Um, Jean is my very good friend. And I'm happy to be here. And I'm happy for this platform that Rehema has started. I think as a generation, we need such positive energy uh, because out there, you know, things are a bit muddy at, muddy at times. So yeah, I really love this platform and, you know, I'm honored to be here today and looking forward to this conversation. Thank you. Thanks, Moses. And speaking of friend, this whole month we'll be having conversations around and also moving forward, conversations around friendships and relationships and what exactly that looks like in today, looks for us today as whether you're in your 30s, 40s, 20s, teens, exactly how do we pick friends? How do we move beyond betrayals? How do we date? How do we cultivate friendships when we're uh, with cl in classmates or when you're married or dating just generally and Moses and I have been friends from 20 oh, 20, 20, 20 2011 ah, yes <laughs> oh, that clues in on our age but yes 2011 in high school so I have come to discover that you can actually be in relationship with people and they're not re really your friends. Like you can have relationship without friendship. And sometimes it can be a painful realization if this is someone you're dating and you're like, yo, they're my best friend. And then you kind of notice that maybe they don't feel the same way or you have not cultivated a friendship within the relationship, but life is full of relationships with your co-workers, with your classmates, with your gym mates, and people you just people you meet on the day-to-day. -day, life is full of relationships. So how do you define who your friend is? Like exactly how do you say this is my friend and this is not my friend like where is that line first of all you mentioned uh gym friends i think that is why <laughs> that is because i'm here and i'm a i'm a regular visitor to the of the gym so but i think i think that a friend is someone who you relate to on the same frequency on a specific area or on specific areas. What I mean by frequency is that, you know, Rehema, you can't be yeah. friends with someone who you can't, or you, you can't be friends with someone who when you're, you know, stuck up in a room together, you have nothing to talk about, you know, or, you know, a friendship is based on a certain frequency of relation which must be similar. And that is why, you know, as they say, birds of the same feather, they flock together. So if you find someone who you relate to on the same frequency, based on, you know, your interest in life or, you know, in you as a person, that is a likely candidate uh, of a friend. I don't know if it makes sense. Yeah, but a friend is someone who you relate to on the same frequency. And, you know, that frequency is mutual. And through that frequency, you get to form a relationship bond that is stronger that, than, you know, that one of the mere social interactions that we have with, uh, we, we come across with every day. So, you know, you can have a gym buddy who is not your friend. So what happens is, um you're there then you know you just do the weights uh, uh, together then after that you leave 
but that friendship is not something else that I, I that I must say is that um, it is not merely just relating on that frequency, but it reaches a point where it's you know it is heart to heart. You know the frequencies, you know it filters out the potential friends that you may have. Uh, based on you know your interests, what you like, you met in the gym, you met in church, you know you met here. So that sets the platform. But for that person to become like a friend, it is that frequency. But it graduates into something more intimate, um, more of a heart to heart connection. And with time, I will you know I'll try to explain what I mean by this. But yeah, I think a a friend is a social interaction or our social interactions that supersede you know just the mere social interaction and you know it ascends to somewhere where you know it is a heart to heart connection yeah wow you said so many things that i would like to unpack and one of them is you've brought out the aspect of categorization of friends and there's this lady called Bianca Olto. Uh, you can check her out. She's on YouTube, Instagram. And she says that there are three categories of friends. So you have your casual friends. And these are, are, are a result of your uh, your day-to-day. -day. They're a result of your circumstance. So you meet them at work, at school, at the supermarket, at the gym. Then you have, from your casual friends, you have your close friends and your close friends are a result of choice then so these are people you interact with that you choose to make your friends so the way Moses you've said not everyone at the gym is your friend but there is someone who you know it the, the, the frequency and all that of communication you're at the same you know you understand each other there's there's a connection there and then there's your core friends and your core friends are a result of wisdom and trust. So you've mentioned um, aspects of friendship. So we have those layers of friends. And you mentioned that friendships should have, number one, they should be intimacy. There was that kind of heart to heart relationship. And then you mentioned an aspect of mutuality. It's not just me doing everything and you receiving all the time, there's this mutuality. And then you said also now the same frequency. So I have, I have a, just a question on that. Based okay. the way we are told in, in Proverbs that like Proverbs 12, 26 tells us that the righteous choose their friends wisely and or carefully but the way of the wicked leads them astray. And we've seen that we have our casual friends, people you interact with on the day-to-day. -day, and then now there's your close friends, people you choose. So on your aspect of like same frequency, and you said friendship, there's that same frequency. If you're put in a room, there's something to, to discuss. Do you think that two people or a bunch of people who have different value systems. I don't think the same way you do. I There's some things I do that you don't do. Like I, my Friday nights consist of Netflix and tea and you probably like to go out and have fun. Whatever your definition of have fun is, I like, you know, reading the Bible and going to church and you're more of let's go skating and church is the farthest thing on your mind but you still have some things in common do you think that two people with different value systems can become close friends or core friends in that they can do life together or will the friendship always have there'll always be a barrier because there's times you have someone who's your friend for the longest time i don't know if you've experienced this then over time your values change you kind of start growing in different directions and the con you start talking like oh this i think god is calling you to do this and the person is like yo last night was so fun we did this and you're like okay we, 
we kind of have nothing to discuss. What also do you do in times when your value system with your friends, you are here and it just kind of starts going this way? Can there be a coexisting there? What do you think? Well, um, if I may start here, you know, first of all, you categorize the friendships as, you know, the most intimate, then the ones in the middle, then, you know, these social interactions. <clears throat> how, how I may look at it is this way. There are those people, you know, your colleagues, uh, the people you meet on your day to day interactions, you know, who may be your colleagues, your acquaintances. So that is one level of interaction. And if you may, if you may allow me to define friendship as to how the Bible packages it, um, mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I, I feel as if there's, there's a segment, there's the people you interact with socially, these the people, you know, we're a relational being. So they, we always relate with people. So there are those people you relate with, you talk to your colleagues. Then there's this other level of friendship. And by friendship, I don't want to, you know, these days there are a lot of, you hear that in the new year, you hear I'm cutting off toxic friends. Then the next year you mm. also hear, you hear I'm cutting off you wonder, Connie, this guy has how many toxic friends? So <laughs> I, 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 want to, I want to put, you know, I want to put that element of friendship or, or that uh, dimension of friendship as to what it should really be rather than what the world has defined it to be. Uh, I think it is very important because, you know, these days you hear that, you know, people are in a love triangle, you find that it's a friend who is, you know, that sort of thing. So that reduces that word friend into something that is not really it. So the first thing is to put it back to what it is and what it should mean. So, <clears throat> okay. you know, being a friend, being a friend is, even in this marriage talks, you hear that, you know, marry your friend, so that word friend, it underlies that covenant of marriage. So that means it is something very important and very key. So it should not be used lightly. This does not mean that the people you relate to on this other level, you do not have love for them or, you know, I'm just thrusting back up that word friend into what the Bible defines it to be. Um, when you look at the story of David, David and Jonathan, you find that element of friendship or that aspect of friendship being brought out so profoundly. When you look at it's in 1 Samuel chapter 18. And um, this is, you know, after David had killed Goliath, he had, they had gone after the Philistines and, you know, they, they had that So first Samuel chapter 18 verses one to four, uh, you see where this friendship of David and Jonathan started. And it says, after David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan, Jonathan became one in spirit with David and he loved him as himself. From that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return home to, to his family. That is to Jesse and his brothers. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it to David, along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow, and his belt. So that is what a friendship should look like. There are many things you can see from this. First of all, it shows us that as a friend, you should be in one spirit. That is why you cannot be a true friend to someone if you're unequally yoked. You, because friendship is a heart to heart connection. So that means that, you know, the question should not be, 
how should I choose my friends? But the question should be, why are you friends with who you're friends with? Okay? Is that element there that comes in? Because you attract your frequency. The condition of your heart attracts who you'll be friends with. And as I said, the friends, I don't mean, you know, this, I, I mean that genuine friend, as the Bible has put it, through David and Jonathan. So if I look at it that way, um, you know, it brings a level of seriousness to that word friend. Because yeah. I, think, I think the word friend has been watered down so much in that, you know, today someone is your friend, tomorrow they're not your friend. In that, you know, maybe, you know, they have done something bad, maybe they've bite, they backbited on you, or those sort of things. So, um, but from here, we see that you are joined with your friend in spirit, in that it is a heart-to-heart -heart connection. Then there must be a covenant. You know, by covenant, you know, using the word covenant, um, it can make things too serious. It's not like, you know, you go, you, you cut your hand, then the other one cuts their hand, then you, you join your blood together. I think by, by this gesture of Jonathan um, taking off the robe he was wearing, giving it to David and all those things, it shows us that you know, um, it is in John that, I think John 15, that that says, um, just a minute, John 15, 13, it says, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. So the laying down your life or the coming through to your friends, it is by action. You know, it is not by mere, mere words. You know, we talk with you, then you tell me, you know, you need this and this or uh, you're in this situation, you need some advice, you're in this place, you know, you need some help, then I, you know, there's no action from my side. I'm just like, okay, I'm sorry, I'll pray for you. Okay, I'm sorry, I'll pray for you. All the time, there's no, how can I put it? There's no reciprocating gesture from my side to show that, or to signify the friendship. So friendship is you are one spirit, it has a covenant. And also by covenant, um, but I'll come to this. Then the third and the most important thing is that friendship is underlined by love. And it is not love for the other, but love for God. Because, you know, if you have a friend, Jean, you're my friend, you're not with me only through the good times, you know, you're with me even through the bad times. And the bad times, it does not mean that when I'm down or, you know, when I have this issue, it also means when there's like a friction between us, I'm still your friend and you're still my friend. So if someone has a rigid heart in that, you know, there is no love, it will get to a point that you're my friend, I'm your friend, but we have these differences and because there's no love, uh, what happens? You part ways. So that's what happens. So um, the underlying factor to a genuine friendship is love. It is love. And um, if I may read just a minute, uh, I'll find that verse. Just a minute. Okay, there's that verse that says that a friendship is born in love and a brother is born in adversity. So how may look it, how may look, I'm paraphrasing, I'm paraphrasing it, but how may look at this is, is like this. Um, before you have a brother or a sister, you know, that place of brotherhood or sisterhood it is a step in this context, it is a step after friendship in that a, a friend is born in love, a brother is born in adversity. So it means that um, 
in the time of adversity, before it gets to that time, you first of all need to have a friend. A friend who is you're intimate enough to stick with you even in times of what adversity. So, and friendship is first of all born in love and out of love. And the truth is, if you don't have love in your heart, you can't really have genuine friendships. You can't, you will have, you will have transactional relations, you know, always, mm. you know, taking care of what the other is doing. Are they, am I happy with this? Am I happy with what, what they're doing? Are they helping me? Do I, do I profit yeah. from this relationship in any way? So those yeah. are the things that come about when a friendship is genuinely not out of love, okay? So that is why um, I think friendship is born out of love. So I don't know if I've answered that question. Uh, I, 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 I suspect I've talked a lot. So let me keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> the verse you're looking for so it's actually the verse in the calendar oh. and it's Proverbs 17 17 uh, yeah. it says that a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity yeah. and there's just something you've said that I'd like to touch on that one for I think like if someone shares something with you and it's just like oh I'll pray for you I'll pray for you I think today we delegate a lot to Jesus and to God. Someone has a need that we can help them out with, but it's like, oh, oh yeah, so oh, you're, you're having a headache and you live three minutes from me, I'll pray for you. There's no like, oh, let me, let me come over with some painkillers and help you out with your dishes. Just we delegate a lot and I think that's one of the places we fail as Christians because people will find more love in the world than they will with Christians because we, we kind of get lazy and delegate to God. Oh, you, you're hungry or you can't make your rent instead of me checking out who has something you can do or how I can help you out. It's like, oh, don't worry, God will come through for you. I'm going to pray for you. Oh, you're unwell, you have a stomach bug, you're vomiting, I'll pray for you. Instead of me showing up, yes, there is definitely power in prayer. But instead of me showing up there and taking care of needs that somebody has to physically, I delegate to God. And sometimes I think God is like, wait, you're right there. You are my hands and feet. People see me through you. If you completely... We are completely out of touch with people's tangible needs. It's just like, oh, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. And I think that's one of the places we fail in friendship in, because instead of meeting the needs tangibly, we can meet needs tangibly and pray. We just delegate everything to God, which I think is definitely something in culture that we should change.